Hey, what's up, everybody? Stop me if you heard this one before. The key is to get a job, start working when you're 20, save your money. Then when you turn 65, you can retire and enjoy the rest of your life. I'm pausing on purpose. Because I want you to actually sit there and think about that. With all that being said, welcome to Passing Money. This is Kirby. That's Alex right there. And today we're going to talk about why wait till you're in a wheelchair to go on vacation and enjoy your life. So Alex, I'm going to let you start off before I go on my normal 50, 50 minute rant. And I'm going to try to keep it short. But what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. Um, and I used to think like the only way to do it was that I, I used to think that the only way was either you could be like some of these young people where they're spending all their money traveling and having fun and all that, but then they can never retire when they get old or be frugal your whole life and then retire and then you can travel. But learning how to invest has changed my mindset on that. If you put all the work up front and you your life revolves around investing and those assets can provide whatever life you want. You know, you can travel at any moment, but the work it's, it's required though. The, you're not going to be vacationing in the beginning, you know, when you are building um, assets and uh, begin your financial journey, you're not going to be taking vacation. Mark Cuban talks about that. You know, he took no vacation for seven years straight built his company sold it retired um right. but you know it's it's that same concept you know you're you have to give it your all and when you are building vacationing can be detrimental to you building if you take the five thousand dollar vacation and you're in the beginning stages that's going to be a huge setback because you're not at that point yet where you can just recuperate five thousand dollars like it was nothing so you know, you do have to do the work up front, but then that can set you up for life. Yeah. And I remember when we first started talking and us and and you, and I, I asked you, I said, what's your goals? And you said, oh, I just want to be able to I want to be able to retire. And travel. And. I mean, it didn't resonate to me because I did all my traveling, you know, in my younger days. Um, and I just said, we'll go travel. I mean, to to me, it sounded like that just threw you into a loop. Just like, what what, the, what do you mean? You gotta you gotta wait. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. And the thing is, yeah. if you spend the early parts, if you spend your twenties, I mean, hell, I mean, just think you. This was an 18, 19... You're 23, 24 now. So this is five years. So in that five years, you went from thinking that you had to work and save every penny you had, eat ramen noodle sandwiches and things, just to have the ability when you know you're 50 and 60 to go travel. Now you didn't went from 65 down to 24, and then hell, now you're going more places than I'm going. That's what it is. But you spent that time. Whatever time it was, you spent that time maximizing your efforts to build, to have income coming from different sources than a W-2 job, than the nine to five. Then, oh, I worked the nine to five, I paid a 401k, and I'm hoping to God Social Security is still there when I turn 65 so I can be able to live off of. You took your retirement into your own hands. You didn't depend on, you know, said company to make sure that you could live your golden year. It don't take 50 years to build, to be able to go enjoy your life. It's a hard five, a hard 10, and then you can enjoy the rest. But if you go through the traditional way, it's 20 to 65. So that's two thirds of your life. The first zero to 18, you know, you under mom's law, under mom's mom's and dad law, got to do whatever everything they say. And then, so that's one third of your life. The other, let's say two, 
two and a quarter, you know, of the time you under boss's law, oh, I only can take vacations, I only got 15 days of vacation, I only can take this much, then I got to ask for permission to take time off. So you're doing that from 20 to 65. And then you get 65, you're broke down from your job, you can't move that much, you're in the hospital all the time, and then what you're going to just live the last 15 years of your life? And if you go through the model of depending on your job to recover, the last 15 years of your life is still going to be a struggle. I mean, I know people on Social Security right now, their Social Security don't even cover their rent payment. That's that's the reality of it. Pension has become obsolete. So the only thing they're hoping for that, you know, with that 3% they saved in a 401k over 45 years, of course, 99% of people in the wrong investments in their 401k anyway, then that's going to be enough money for them to go do anything. If Social Security can't cover rent now, just imagine what it'll be in your case in another 40 years. So if you don't take control of your financial situation and you're hoping said job is going to do it, you're going to be highly disappointed when you reach the golden years of your life. And I mean, you're proof of the pudding. I mean, you went from having that mindset of, okay, the only way I'm going to be able to do this is if I just save to oblivion and then maybe I get lucky to travel. You just flip the mindset to, hey, I'm just going to bust my ass right now, focus 100% on building assets, getting assets that's going to kick me off dividends and keep growing, and now be able to travel. You up on mountains every damn week I call you, you somewhere else. I'm like, what the hell going on? You know, <laughs> But that's all it takes. It don't take 45 years to be able to enjoy traveling. It takes five hard years. You're gonna put the time, you're gonna put the time in working anyway. You might as well just make it a short, hard five years and enjoy the rest of your life. And that's that's something that people need to understand the concept of. But go ahead, Alex, what you got? Yeah, I'd also um like to make it known, you know, like I think a, a lot of people think that traveling internationally outside of the US is gonna be more expensive than in the US. But honestly. We took a trip to California. Um, I can't remember when, and like uh, a little over a year ago, I think. And um, gosh, I don't even remember when. But we took a trip to California. That cost more than a, the trip to Colombia, and it was because mostly because Colombia, you know, their uh, peso, you know, is way less than the u.s dollar so the u.s dollar is way stronger and you know you can get a lot more out of the u.s dollar um but yeah for people that want to travel you know don't don't not think about traveling outside the u.s and i remember i texted you i said this is i said now i know why you said go travel if if you travel travel outside the u.s i was like it's a whole other world <laughs> it's, it's, totally it's a whole different, different world yeah, the cultures are different. The food's different. The people, the people are different. Like it's totally different. Well, and and the main thing is, and I want the audience to understand. Alex is not saying, "Hey, oh, you use your nine to five job and just throw caution to the wind and go travel. Forget it. This is not YOLO. This is, hey, sit here and bust your ass for five to ten years, and then you have the ability to go." That's it. You have the ability to go. But if you sit here, stay independent on a W-2 job, you know, working for the scraps that you're getting, you know, putting the money in the 401k and you want a hope system, then you're screwed. I mean, you're literally screwed. I mean, I, I always tell people, people always ask me, hey, when are you going to slow down and retire? I was like, first off, I'll never slow down. Second off, I said, retire and do what? Because everybody's goal is, oh, you get to retire and you get to travel. And I said, I didn't been to more places than most people will ever see in their life. I didn't already travel. And they're sitting there looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, wait, you're not 65. How, how are you traveling? I tell people, like, because, of course, the hallmark is Dubai. They're like, yeah, just hopefully one day I can get to Dubai. I was like, oh, I've been there 20 times already. But they sitting there looking like, wait, you you didn't 
because they're so caught in the matrix. Oh, it has to be this way. It has to be you have to work till you're 65 to go travel. What the hell am I going to do at 65? I probably got on the pins and a walker. I can't even move around. What the hell? What the hell? There's no enjoyment in that. But what I did do is I sacrificed, you know, five, ten good years of, you know, focusing on the money, compiling the cash for it to go buy assets. And the key thing is I'm not paying for these trips. The assets that I bought is paying for the trips. So the assets will keep generating money. So I'm not sitting here looking like, oh, well, I got to work an extra 40 hours of overtime to, to be able to pay for this trip. The assets are going to keep generating income after I go on the trip. So when I come back from the trip, the coffer is going to be replenished already. So if you focus on buying assets that offshoots funds, those funds alone will give you the available funds to go on trips. Now, I'm not saying, oh, I mean, if you want to quit your job, you can. But the key is putting the money, your working income, your greatest wealth building years as early as possible into assets that will generate you cash flow. Once you have enough cash flow that supersedes your W-2 income, I say, you know, 2.5 to three times your W-2 income, then, yeah, you can quit if you want. If you want to stay there and work, that's fine. But you have options. You could be like, hey, I'm going on a vacation. Every time. Alex, Alex is at his job. Every other week, he's going some damn place else. I don't think he ran out of vacation days by now, but I guess not. <laughs> but that's what, that's what you have the option to do. When you have enough money coming from outside sources, you have the ability to say, I'm doing this no matter what anybody says. So I'm going to stop right there because I'll be going on all day with this. One. Yeah. Um, no, that, that was the big thing for me was, you know, assets, assets will buy you that freedom. That's, that's what I look at it as. Like you said, and I don't know if it was this video or the last video, but uh, money is the byproduct of, you know, what you build, you know, and with that money, you can buy freedom. And I heard someone say this, um, think it was uh the person who's banned on youtube i'll just say that but um mm -hmm. it was uh money doesn't buy happiness but it buys freedom which freedom buys happiness it's just simply put it it's all it is i mean when you have money you can you can do whatever you want i mean and being free in life is i mean that's people don't realize they're literally in a jail cell pretty much their whole lives called a job so but with all that being said guys if you like the video hit the like button leave a comment down below share subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one